Sangeet in the Learning and Talent Development team. And I welcome you all to the virtual thought leadership meet for the month of March, which is on a very interesting topic, um, uh, discover your purpose. But before we get there, I wanted to talk a little bit about NHRD Bangalore chapter, the initiatives that we have and the programs that we conduct. So as you know, uh, NH overall at the national level, we have about 13,000 members and Bangalore chapter has about over 2,500 members. Uh, the intent and the objective of NHRD is to promote development amongst HR professionals. And with that objective in mind, we have uh, some unique and very interesting initiatives at an NHRD level and at a Bangalore chapter level. We do these thought leadership meets like we're doing today every month, the last Thursday of every month. And for the last one year, obviously it is uh, virtual now. We curate and design and conduct a lot of learning programs and some of you I know have been part of some of these programs. Uh, we have webinars, tweet chats. Uh, recently, we've also started doing informal coffee chat conversations on our social media live. We have a very strong wing uh, in academia wing, uh, which we call it Confluence, um, in which we develop, uh, you know, HR capability among students. And our annual event, HR Showcase, is a unique great uh, style event to showcase the best HR practices. So that's a little bit about uh, uh, Bangalore chapter. Like I said, that we have over 13,000 members and we have multiple membership rates. So I know some of you are members, some of you are planning to become members. So we have an individual membership as well as an institutional membership. I have a lifetime individual membership, which I took long back, about five to six years back. For the last two to three months, we are running this special offer. This is the first time, at least, you know, in the last couple of years uh, that we have done, which is a 20% discount. Uh, so all membership fees has a 20% discount, which means your individual lifetime membership, which was earlier 10,000 is now 8,000 plus GST. And similarly for a lot of other membership types. Key value propositions, what do you get to you know, once you become a member, you get access to a lot of resources. You get access to a lot of people, unlimited networking, special discounts for various learning programs, and an opportunity to work on various projects. I've been closely associated with NHRD for last four years, and I contribute a lot of my learning and networking through that. So only till March 31st, which is next Wednesday. If you want to become a member, please avail this offer. We are not going to extend this offer beyond March 31st. Uh, we have uh, yeah, talking about our upcoming program. So we had a very successful batch of design thinking, uh, which concluded a couple of days back. Uh, we're launching this uh, program on art of business storytelling. We've done a couple of batches earlier as well with Amin Huck. And we're starting again on May 1st, which will be spread over six Saturdays for two hours each. Again, we have special dates for members um, and non-members who want to become, you know, members, you know, also get a discounted rate. So the rates are here. You can go on our social media page and, you know, get all these details. Uh, but would request, you know, whoever is interested, I have attended this course and it's a very interesting course. I mean, is a brilliant facilitator. Uh, do sign up for this learning program of ours. Uh, we are active on all our social media, uh, you know, channels. In fact, uh, I would request you all to tweet with this hashtag while the session is on. Spread the word, you know, talk about it, you know, um, follow us, follow us on all the social media channels. With this, now I'll introduce the speaker and also set the context of this session, uh, which is a March 2021 Thought Leadership Meet. Uh, this session is on a very interesting topic, which is on how do you discover your purpose? And, uh, you know, this is a topic which is very close to my heart as well. I've been also on this journey to discover my why. And uh, I've been very fortunate, uh, you know, to have interacted with Himanshu, who's going to be our facilitator for today. I've attended uh, a number of his amazing sessions and was very, very keen to bring him to this forum of NHRD. 
So talk to you a little bit about Himanshu and to introduce Himanshu. Like he says, Himanshu, uh, Himanshu Saxena is a thinker, writer, speaker, and coach. He's the founder and CEO of Center of Strategic Mindset, COSM, which is a full spectrum boutique consulting organization in strategy, leadership development, design thinking, and innovation. He considers himself as a student of life and a teacher of experience. A uh, constant learner and he's a seeker of experiences. Himanshu has had diverse and very contrasting experiences. And I've been very fascinated by that too, starting from an exploration geologist to military, uh, to United Nations, uh, to consulting, corporations and entrepreneurship. In his last corporate uh, assignment, he was the chief strategy officer and head of leadership development for the 20 billion USD global tech firm. Really, really happy to have Himanshu facilitate this session um, and introduce us you know, to some of these tools and techniques on how do we discover our purpose. And this is going to be a session, you know, we're going to keep it interactive and this is a Zoom meeting. So it gives us the flexibility to make it really, really interactive. So keep your questions coming in. Uh, you know, you can type it on the chat window. We can pick it up towards the end, or you can, you know, raise your hand and you know unmute your line later and ask your questions. Um, and if you're not speaking, please don't unmute your line. Uh, it will just, you know, we just want to ensure experience for everyone is seamless. So with that, I'm very happy to welcome Himanshu uh, over to you to facilitate today's session. Thank you, Nikita. Good evening, everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with many people, many of them I know, I've met probably, and Thursday evening, what a perfect timing. I would appreciate if all of you can be on the video on screen because the real energy exchange happens, so it would be a joy to interact real time. Uh, thank you very much for joining for this session. Yeah, nice to see some of the people. Today is a very interesting topic that we're going to spend time and the topic is called uh, why, what is my why? So this is going to be a very intriguing and yet a very timely conversation in your life. I have a feeling that today something is going to change for you. What forever? Any idea what is that going to be? Let me ask you, what do you think could change for you today after today's session? Take a wild guess. Anyone? You can chat, you can put it in the message or you can unmute yourself and speak. Mindset, very good, Sundram, good to see. Yeah. Just to understand uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Very important, yeah. So mindset is clearly, one of the things that I can tell you is going to change is the way you think about things. Mind the question what I'm saying that, how do you think about things is a mindset shift and ostensibly and simply there can be three things that could possibly change for you. The first one is the clarity. You will walk out with more clarity than you had at the beginning of the session. And I'm not saying that before you didn't have any clarity, but with respect to the topic, you'll have a far greater clarity. The second thing is once your clarity is better, you are bound to make a better choice or a set of choices because you'll have a framework for making a choice that can really change. And once you have the clarity and the choice, the next thing that you have is loads of convictions to go about. So you'll develop a conviction that there is a way to chart out your own journey of success and fulfillment, no matter what stage of life you are in. So three C's, the clarity, choices and conviction. So. I hope you are ready for that. And we will have a good set of questions and interactions and we'll keep it going. Now, what do you think gives us the clarity about anything in life? The clarity about career, clarity about purpose and mission in life, clarity about vision, where we would be or could be three to five years from now. So which is that one thing or a set of things that can give you that kind of clarity? Let me see you writing. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge, yes, instinct, okay. What else comes to your mind? Information. Information, okay. Skills. All right, let me see what else is coming out. Vision. 
vision okay self realization could be an outcome goals all right let me tell you there is only one thing which can give us clarity i'm not saying one thing in volume and frequency but it's one thing and that one thing is called questions questions render clarity if you ask questions to yourself you will have clarity isn't it because everything is a subset even for seeking knowledge information the core thing you need is a question and that's why when you attended the first class the teacher asked the question so guys is the questions that will render you clarity the answer is simple it is the questions as well as the process of asking questions in a structured manner so today we're going to spend some time in how to ask the questions in a structured manner friends deeper the question that you ask greater is the clarity you will walk away i'm going to repeat this statement deeper the question that you ask greater the clarity you will walk away in any field depending upon the type and quantity of church questions that you ask yourself questions hold the secrets for future as well as for your success many times you go back into your life and how many times you ask the question that opened a new door for you so it is about process of asking question and the quality of questions now the question is where and how do you get to ask these questions that make you think differently the answer is great questions emerge from a junkyard of lots of good questions i'm going to repeat that great questions emerge from a junkyard of lots of good questions and good questions come from the discipline of asking simple daily questions how does that make sense to you anyone does this start resonate with you does it make sense to you lot of people are trying to look and chase for that one epiphanic question no it does not come like that if you build a mountain of questions lots of questions the practice of question suddenly the best questions rise up the pyramid so what i like you to do is to build a practice of asking simple daily loads of question you know 2 years ago i was returning i was at nevar airport and from the bookshop i chanced upon a book the book is titled as the q and a for soul question and answers for the soul the beauty of this book is that it is a five year journal which has 365 days into five years that makes it 1825 answers that you will have at the end of five years provided you take 10 minutes to ponder over the question that particular day so this is how the book is organized the book has a question right on top which is something like this and then there is a blank space for you and that question and the blank space for you is a prompt or a trigger so basis that question you can write whatever comes to your mind now here are some thoughts for you number 1 do you have firstly how much of life change it can happen at the end of the 5 year you will be sitting on a mountain of 1825 answers and points of view you will have culled out those many original thoughts because you are not chasing perfect answer you are writing what comes to your mind and being an original thinker by attempting to answer these questions you will be on the path of becoming a thought leader so i have this book and every 10 every minute every day 10 minutes i spend and whatever question is there on that day i make an attempt to write something about that now certain guidelines for you some questions are simple some questions are very profound but i am not looking that you should look to write a perfect answer you know some questions are so simple that you'll get some will require and that's where you can get into a mindset trap of oh do i need to the, write the perfect answer so 
Now, here are some of the examples like, what do you miss when you give in to the fear of missing out? Oh, you never open that door and window for the rest of the life and you carry your fears to the grave. Now, all of us were born into this world fearless, but over a period of time, validation, approval, sense of judgment, critique, everything makes us fearful. Now, just imagine what you could do if you give in to the fear of missing out. Very powerful question. Question number two, what could you redo should you? Now go back into your life and see if I could change this part of my life and if I had done it differently, how it could have been. You can learn something from there and apply now. Question number three, what happens when you give something full attention? Now it's like this, if you give water to a particular plant with full love and care, that plant grows. So attention really brings intentionality and that thing grows. So these are the kind of questions that are available in this book and you could really enjoy. Now, what happens that when we look at the questions in totality, there is something called a pyramid of questions. Now here are some of the questions are organized. Let's see some of the questions right from top. Why features right on the top? And that's why we are spending time on today's session that what is my why? Right on top, we have the question of why because unless why is clear, our heart will not be engaged. You can tell someone to do a task, but if he doesn't understand the why, he only contributes 20% and 30% of the effort. And then everybody crips about, crips about the disengaged workforce. Make people understand why we are doing what we are doing. The question number two in the pyramid right from top is what? What is about the clarity, specificity, and the exactness of the goal? Three things are important in what? When you ponder over the what, you get this clarity, what exactly needs to be done, what specific needs to happen, and what is the exact nature of the goal? The third is who? Who is about your audience and relevance? You know, every crazy idea that we have or a solution that we may harbor must have an audience. And that's where a lot of people have gone wrong. They, they thought of an idea, they deeply romanticized about that idea, they fell in love with that idea, but they just couldn't think of the audience or they couldn't think of the relevance. So who is a very important question in the hierarchy. And uh, then, then only the question of how comes in and thereafter where and when, which is more about plan and execution. So let me state why is about existence and significance. What is about clarity? Who is about relevance? How is about the methods and, mad, um, methods and methodology? And where and when is about plan? And yes and no is a binary choice. Now I'm showing you this pyramid what is that one thing I want to achieve with you by showing you this pyramid? Any question, comment? You can chat, you can answer. What is my purpose of showing you this pyramid of questions? Giving a thinking framework. Yes. So we should approach the problems in life in a structured manner. And let's spend more time on why rather than getting rushed to solve some of the other things. Awesome. I didn't I say this, that in the beginning, today's session is gonna change the way you think about things. Now, a lot of people approach this pyramid in a reverse order. They approach the pyramid from the bottom to the top. And they succumb too early to this trap of yes, no, without contemplating over the full spectrum of the question. As a result, they run the risk of making very ordinary or mediocre choices. They do not even reach to the point of who, forget about why. And they mostly get stuck at how. Now, six out of 10 people, you give them a challenge or a task, they start pondering how we will do it. And my question to you is, there is a way we should approach things. And this is one of my best reflections that I garnered, that let your how not trump your why. If your why is clear, 
how will appear. I'm going to repeat, let your how not trump your why. If your why is clear, how will appear? Now let me invite some of the thoughts on this particular question. Akhil, what does it relate to you? Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Um, looking forward to this session. I think what you said so nicely that we are so keen to execute and achieve results that we rush into activities before even understanding the whyness of it. And we expect our team to do it, although we talk all esoteric things about purpose, whyness, but we also set deadlines in the first meeting itself. This must be completed by so much and within this much time and this much constraint. So the why is set aside because the how takes over. And I love, love the way you put your quote, uh, how should not trump over why, because if why is clear, how will appear. What a beautiful quote, Ayvansho, what a beautiful quote. Thank you, Akhil. And guys, I'm not saying that you don't worry about how, but you build a partnership. Like in my personal life, I think my wife plays the role of how, and I am rooted in why. But for an initial period, I don't get disheartened and mental by how. And only when you ruminate over why for a period of time, how does appear. So thank you for your comment. Anybody else like to share something about this? Manchur, a few thoughts on the chat window as well, if you want to see that. Please go ahead. Yeah. Sometimes when takes precedence, even before how. Yes, very good. Yeah, I'm not saying that you need to evaluate the sense of urgency, urgent versus significant. But for the strategic things, we can focus on why first before we figure out our how. So moving forward, guys, why is a door opening question? Because why opens the doorway to future? And let me share some of the stories about the why questions, okay? Now, the first one that comes to my mind is a story of a guy called Jack Andraka. He's a 15 year old wonder kind, surreptitiously reading in his high school science, a very scientific, science oriented guy. You know, he came across a tragedy in life. His friend, 15 year old, died of a pancreatic cancer. Now, this particular incident really affected him deeply. He said, how can I lose my 15 year old guy? And then he got so much fascinated or disturbed by that, that he went on a wild goose chase and research. He said, why pancreatic cancer is such a deadly thing? And in his research, he found that early detection is the key. And he realized after research that the test of pancreatic cancer costs $800. It takes 20 to 30 days to get the report. And it's a 60 year old technique. He said, no, it can't be like that. I have to do something about it. Now, here is something I'd like to highlight. A problem happened to someone very close and the person gets affected and he takes it and ponders over this question, why, 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 and continues to remain with why for a persistent period of time. You know, I'm just fast forwarding the story in his summer break with a lot of support from people. And of course, he has his, his parents are also from the same industry. He discovered or invented a test that costs $3 and gets you a report in five minutes. Today, he has a large company, He's been revered and respected by world's who's who. He's spoken in World Economic Forum, Davos, Bill Clinton, Obama, and name the who's who that met him. But look at how his journey started. A 15-year-old teenager guy playing around, suddenly something happens to him. And he said, no, why is like this? And that persistent staying with why led him to discover a pancreatic cancer detection test which changed the life, saved thousands of people's life. I'd like you to read about it in your own time and it's a fascinating story. My second story of why is very well-known story is about a company called 
Warby Parker. Now, Warby Parker is a fascinating story, beautifully covered in a book called Originals by Adam Grant. This is a story about four students on a cool evening in 2008 who set out to revolutionize an industry of glasses. Buried in loans, they had lost and broken eyeglasses and were outraged at how much of it really cost to replace them. Now, one of them had been wearing the same damaged pair for five years and he was using a paper clip to bind the frames together. Even after his prescription changed twice, he refused to pay for the pricey new lens. Instead, he kept asking why glasses are so expensive. And he kept influencing other three also to entertain this question. And I'm using the word entertaining this question of why. Guys, persisting with this question of why led them to discover that Luxottica, the 800 pound gorilla of the industry, controls all the brands, 85% eyewear of the market. And to make glasses more affordable, these students needed to topple a giant like Luxottica. None of them had a background in e-com, technology, let alone in retail, fashion, or apparel. Now, despite being told that their idea is horrible, is crazy, they walked away from lucrative job offers to start a company. And five years later, they would sell eyeglasses that normally cost $500 in store for $95 online and donating a pair to someone in the developing world for every time a purchase has been made. Now, one of these guys came to Adam Grant to invest the money in their company. And Adam Grant went, as per all the analytical frameworks taught in management, he said, no, your idea does not make sense to me, so I'm not going to invest. He later admitted it has been the worst financial decision he ever made because he did not invest in the company. It's a billion dollar company today. So this is the story of Warby Parker where people entered in Initially, it was one person who entertained the question and thereafter he influenced all the four people. So one of the messages that I'm leaving for you is not only you influence or you entertain your own why, but you must develop the art of influence of enabling others also to entertain why collectively. Because when people collectively entertain why, mountains move. Now, I'm going to come closer home to a story in India, which has recently unfolded, you may or may not have a chance to find. So this is a story of a gentleman called Parth Partha Pratim Das Mahapatra, founder and CEO of EasyRx Health. You know what he's done? He's created a device which is non-invasive and in all, you know, like an oximeter, you put your finger his device takes your finger inside and in five minutes on your mobile phone with an application gives you all the parameters without inserting a syringe. He was funded and sponsored by Indian Oil and thereafter he started his own company. Recently in yourstory.com, Shadda covered his, his story and it's really inspiring. Now for hundreds of years, nobody thought that can we create a system of pathology which is non-invasive? And he's entertaining his why, oh, why should a syringe go in my body to get the blood out? Why can't it be done in a different way? So again, I'm going to invite you to read more about this person's story. It's a phenomenal story. And what really makes me happy is that we always talked about technocrats and entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. But today things are changing. People in India are really, you know, influenced by this question of why and why not. Now, why is not a question only to be asked why, but why also adds counter brother, which is why not. When you ask these two questions in an amazing contradiction, you create breakthroughs. So I invite you to entertain both why and why not. Now, I'm going to take a pause here and see what these three stories are really conveying to you. 
to take a pause and I'm going to invite some responses. Tell me what happens when you listen to these three stories. Anybody would like to come and speak, most welcome. Yeah, picking the basic wrongs and chasing them, okay. Now, you heard these three stories. Going forward, how would you approach life in your own context? That's what I'm more keen to know. Think of solutions. Interrogation makes things clear. Again, questions render clarity. Okay, so one of the messages that I want to leave with you on these three stories is, is a phrase that you may like to write down. Find fault in default. Find fault in default. You know, over a period of time, things become a default. And then it keeps going in front of your eyes, but our eyes lose that element of discernment. We just take it the way things as exist. But if you can find the fault in default, you're sitting at the cusp of innovation. You're sitting at the cusp of an idea and that can change your life. So going forward, see if you can apply this discipline of finding fault in default. Now, why do we need to figure out our why? Let me ask this question to you. Why do we need to figure out our why? Why can't we exist without doing that? Anybody? Yes, who would like to take an attempt? Thursday evening. Thursday is the day of Guru. The knowledge descends on you. So if you take a shot, you have the right answer. Yes, anyone who tries to take a shot, you need to figure out why. It, it, it starts the process actually of uh, solving. Beautiful. It's and we would never question the status quo. I mean, we will continue the status quo. Yes. Uh, hi, Himanshu. I think we should believe it first. Then the why will not come in picture. We should really have trust and believe in what we are doing. Okay. Let me tell you, thank you for sharing this. I asked Himanshu this question, why? I feel that I am somewhat in control of the situation. I'm just not following blindly. Hmm. Uh, but somehow I get the ownership sense much stronger if I ask why. Absolutely. Because then in that why I can find my resonance, how I contribute to. You know, in 2017, I was in Phoenix and uh, standing in front of a Walmart store. And uh, after some time, I saw a big Walmart truck coming and the two guys came out who were the drivers. And the Walmart truck has this wonderful quote, which is everyday low prices. I love to make conversations wherever I am. So I just walked up to one of the drivers. I said, hey, what is this written on the wall of your truck? You know what he said? Oh, you don't know? That's our strategy. I said, wonderful. Tell me, how do you contribute to that strategy? Oh. The guy thought for a while. And, you know, the answer that he gave really mesmerized me. He said, didn't you notice the moment we came, we switched off our engine save the gasoline because last year Walmart saved 9 million gasoline on the road by efficient driving. So this is how if you make the why understood by people, they will bring the discretionary effort to make things happen for you. Ivanshu, talking about this driver, there was also this point that they saved something like 20 minutes per delivery because the route that they decided was free right turn in US. Oh, yes? So by taking no left turn and meeting the traffic light, by only taking right, they saved 20 minutes of transit time in a day, which is like making one more stoppage. Yeah. Thanks, Akil. Yeah, so much sense made. The lady before you spoke about belief, we have to believe. 
Now, I don't rem remember your name, but you know, this question of belief is a very tricky thing. Our mind is framed and conditioned. So any new thing or novelty, it's always a hard thing to believe. So I'm going to borrow a dialogue from the movie Munna Bhai MBBS. You know, when a new thought comes, you have to allow some chemical locha, which means you have to entertain that question for some time before you start believing. Otherwise, mind can reject. That's why uh, stay with the question for some period of time. Okay. Okay, Himanshu. Chetali here. Yeah, Chetali. Hmm. Because the way we are conditioned, anything new, it's not in a frame of reference, difficult to believe. Uh, it's the curiosity which... Uh, That's right. So uh, people... Uh, question why, how, where is the curiosity and the eagerness uh, to know which you don't know. Bang on. So yeah. Let's give you some ideas why do we need to figure out our why. First one is the clarity. You know, consistent and persistent why gives us the clarity as to where we are suited for. What is it we are really cut out for? And what is the universe wants to achieve through us? The next thing is passion. If you're asking the why clearly, look at the story of all the three, Jack and Draka, um, the four Warby Parker guys and Mr. Partha. Could they have persisted with their passion? The passion came because they were so incensed by the why. That's how they could, you know, some I don't like the word passion because I find much greater power in the word called Junoon. And the Junoon is so powerful. And all of them are really Junoon cases. The next is obviously energy. All the cases entail huge struggle. And you're trying to topple a gorilla like Luxotica, you need loads of energy. And that energy comes from Junoon and passion. The fourth reason that why is such an important thing is why gets you focus. In order to create something significant, distractions must melt away. And when you continue to ask why many times, then you are sure, yes, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Why also gives you strength. When your distractions go away, the combination of passion, focus, energy, gives you the limitless strength required to move mountains. And finally, why also gives you integrity. Now, this is a little tricky, why I'm using the word integrity. In why you are connected to your inner self and soul. And that's why integrity is, you know, when why is clear, you will not have an issue of waking up five o'clock in the morning and letting an iota of laziness come in your life. So these are the six elements which must be a very significant component of why. That's why we need to invest in why. Any question at this point of time before I proceed? Yeah, I believe uh, consistency and stability also takes place. Yes. All right, moving forward. So if I can sum up why into one line, I would choose to say, why is a North Star question without doubt? I'm going to share a few prompts and triggers to activate your search for why. And this section of conversation is extremely important to so make sure you get all the questions. Number one on the list is, first, we have to combine the why and where together. And if why is combined with where, you're almost slated to carve out your vision. Because you now have a vision with a component of three things. I always choose to describe vision in three words. First, destination, jana kaha hai. Second, direction, kis disha mein jana hai. And third, impact, waha ja ke kya create karna hai. So whenever you are having any discussion about vision or you want to approach vision, remember these three words, destination, direction, and impact. Okay, so to help you carve out your why, I'm gonna give you a couple of questions as prompts. The first one being, ask this question, 
what on earth I'm really here for? Now, this is not a simple, ordinary question, but who says that uh, life has to be approached with simple, ordinary question? Now, you may not get the answer for many days. It's the thought process of entertaining this question which will drive significance. What I'm going to show you now will make you understand the power of this question. Firstly, what on earth I'm really here for you can further demystify through subset question. The first one is, is it mere survival or consumption? Have I come in this world only to survive and consume? See what kind of answer comes to your mind. Second one, is it only about success? And third, is it only, is there a case for creating significance? So this question, what on earth I'm really here for, should make you think about three more questions. Is it only about survival? Is it about success? Or is there a case for creating significance? Now, these three questions relate well to three levels of living, which I'm going to talk about. Number one is a living called survival level of living, where we are just surviving. Second is success level of living good place to be from survival, you move to success level, but what next after? And that's where it comes significance level of living. <clears throat> and significance always comes from service. Now look at this guy Sonam Wangchuk in Ladakh. The amount of work that he's done to make life easy for people is pure service. The other person that comes to mind is a guy called Kalash Satyati who got the Nobel his price, 83,000 children he saved from child labor. So significance always comes from service. And there are lots of successful people in this world, but someday they get that spiritual emptiness before going to sleep. And that's where this question, what on earth I'm really here for, is a very significant question. All right, question number two is, what does universe want to achieve through me? I'm part of a universe, the grand design, there has to be something. So do I talk to universe and kind of communicate, okay, what do you want to achieve through me? Now look at this guy, Partha. There is a conversation that's happening between him and the universe at the very tacit level. Can you imagine future all your pathology without invasive procedure. Who wants an injection? Again, let's look at how do we defrag this. So what's my role in the greater scheme of things? This question will prompt you to get the answer for the bigger question. What problem I have been ordained to solve? You know, I talk to so many people in various organizations, cooperation, everybody seeks growth. And my question to them is, which is the bigger problem you are stated to solve? Because growth is directly dependent upon what problem you are solving. If you want to grow in life, try and discover a bigger problem and then go and solve it. What's my calling? So these are the three questions that will give you a sense of what does the universe want to achieve through me. Question number three, where do I fit in in this universe? Is there a place for me? And when you ask this question, three things can come to your mind. What's my play field? Like for a very accomplished cricketer, cricket ground is his play field. The bat and ball are his tools. For Partha, the scientific mind, a technocrat thinking, and the question of why are his tools? For me, thinking, writing, speaking, coaching, asking questions are my tools. Think about what's your play field, what are going to be your tools, and what do you wish to create? You answer these questions and you get closer to the bigger question, where do I fit in this universe? Okay, let's take a pause. Anybody can tell me how many questions have we entertained in today's session? Wild guess. 
Let's see the number coming in your chat. 12, okay. Fifteen, eighteen, all right. We'll figure out more than twenty. Okay. Now, why I'm asking you the number of questions you ask? See, guys, it's not important that you'll get the answer of all the questions. You may not have the answers. That is not necessary. What is really important is to entertain this process of questioning. And I always say, unanswered questions. are far less dangerous than unquestioned answers it's good to ask a question and not get an answer but don't take the answer as it is like a status quo and go and live your life through that that's where you'll not be able to find the fault and in default so remember the book which i mentioned q and a for soul 1825 and after 5 years you can replace the book you can get on ready with the next 5 years have you got any idea how much of content you will create and that's going to be your original piece of content so how do we figure out our why let's talk about some of the process so one of my first tools that i'm going to give you is called what is my operating space so draw a triangle right now and think of which are those three things that you really love in which you have deep expertise you always want to do something about it and you want to continue to learn and thrive for me those three things are strategy whether it was corporate or military i always really relish anything to do with strategy the second thing is about culture turning sick unit around turning a sick team into an alpha team has always given me fascination i still love the movie long time back came do aankhein bara hath i don't know if you heard that movie where a jailer transformed 12 hardcore criminals into an amazing plot so culture is my second piece and third is leadership so 35 years of my career primarily have been invested in these three areas and when you kind of intersect these three things you get your central point which is about for me purpose and impact change and transformation so let me give you 2 minutes to draw your triangle and see intuitive recall what comes to your mind which defines your operating space and then we're going to have some volunteers to share that. and don't judge your thoughts whatever comes to your mind only when you written your first version you can improve the narrative you going to have three volunteers sharing so get ready who should like to share I would like you to pick the three vertex and draw the circle and see what comes to your mind. the okay, last 20 seconds okay so before i invite people to share let me ask you what did this exercise do to you anyone
yeah if you want to speak unmute yourself and share people will love to hear from you about your thought process what did it to you no it is primarily uh, like discovering your interest uh, deep interest areas yes you know this exercise will get you closer to your sweet spot okay anybody else this is my operating space so if you can figure out early in your life what's going to be my operating space you know this is where i need to learn this is where i need to invest this is where i need to look for opportunities this is where i need to solve challenges everything gets definitive focus is extremely important so anybody who would like to talk about his triangle and share three volunteers Uh, good evening sir this is anu shraddha uh, i am a freelance counselor and a lecturer uh, for bba students uh, this triangle uh, any point of time uh, my platform is very limited but i would like to speak uh, thank you for giving me opportunity because everybody is experienced here uh, this a uh, triangle gives you the clarity because any point of time where you reach and where you have started uh, people get confused misguided by the environment and external forces at the time we need to rethink analyze what are we doing like about the universe uh, you gave the questions like where are we and what we are supposed to give to the surrounding that way we have the clarity where we want to reach and at what point of time and what are the gaps we can fill in the future thank you sir very good anushadha very well shared and i love the thought process the way you assimilated and described thank you for sharing yes anybody else thank you sir uh, so for me like uh, things which come are uh, read write and free thinking so uh like through it like i can contribute something uh new and novel very good that sounds like me read write and free thinking that's what i do <laughs> ash now i'm going to give you a yeah what what did come out in the circle so so in circle like once you start free thinking then uh, uh, you can add a new perspective of uh, whatever way we are doing the thing yeah harsh i'm going to give you a prompt now with read writing and free thinking if you embark on a mission that how many people you can enable to think freely do you have any idea how much of difference you will create have you ever thought of that uh up till now i haven't thought of it but yeah. but of course uh, like in hindi there is a famous proverb एक और एक ग्यारह तो पता नहीं आप कितने एक जोड़ रहे हैं तो इट मे बी लाइक टेन टू लैक्स एंड समथिंग लाइक लैक्स ऑफ पीपल या सी रिमेंबर आई टोल्ड यू वन थिंग वाई के बाद व्हाट और उसके बाद हु ओनली व्हेन यू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग ऑफ द हु यू हैव अ वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन यू हैव अ कस्टमर इन प्लेस यू हैव द एलिमेंट ऑफ रेलिवेंस and there are a lot of people in this world who want to be a free thinker isn't it a lot of people by the time are 30 they're thinking gets clouded by validation approval comparison and everything so this is a great example and just you need to change the lens through which you are looking at these vertices and you have an opportunity to do that okay last volunteer who would like to do that anybody else there has to be a clear vision we can uh, draw the uh, anecdote uh, from uh, these three uh, words strategy culture and leadership which gives us a clear vision and vision um, for the entire uh, agenda like how an organization works yes all right 
So listen, after two days, the weekend is going to come. Now my aim is not to just give this session and let you lose the steam. My aim is to take this exercise deeply. Once in a lifetime, you get a chance to reflect deeply, which can change your life. If you deeply think about what is going to be my operating space and work along these questions of why, who, where, you're going to create a new possibility for you. So take this weekend, drill on it, really figure out what is my why by defining your operating space first. So this is the first thing. The second thing is what I'm going to do is, you know, ask this question, if money was not a constraint, what would I be doing? You know, somebody spoke about free thinking, money is a constraint. So if I think of my life, when I was a kid, used to stay in a place called Sultanpur in UP, had a house behind uh, backyard was River Gomti. And as a child, I would sit on a swing and often dream about. And when I think of that memory, the three words come to my mind, dreaming, thinking, and conversation. I always dream, dream big, always think about why certain phenomena are like that. And if anybody comes to our house, I'll be really craving for the conversation. Today, as a facilitator and coach, I exactly use these three things, dream, uh, dreaming, thinking, and having conversation. You think of in your life, I always used to say, which I said, money is not a constraint. But when I look deeply, I said, this is what I enjoyed. But only after getting the clarity of operating space, thinking about why, money became a byproduct of that. So that's my message. If you, if you can apply this question and really think and deeply for a period of time, you will know what you are really good at, where you can serve best, and who, can be of, who you can be of relevance for. And money is just a byproduct or an outcome of these three things. The other thing is to think of this quadrant and there are four questions. Number one, what makes you come alive? I'm reading a book. I always read a hard copy. I always have a pen because the moment, moment I start reading, I feel like writing on the book. That makes me come fully alive because I'm developing new thoughts. It's called generative thinking. Then the second question, at the end of the day, end of the life, how will you measure your life? Now, I have probably worked with more than 600 leaders as a coach, 13,000 people in groups. So my mission for the current 2025 is to change the life of 25,000 people. With God's grace, the number of years I'll have, probably how will I measure the life is how many lamps I lit and root. So second question can give you your hook on which you can discover. Third is, what can you truly solve or change in this world for good? For me, it's mindset. So every time I meet someone, I would like to see if this person walks in to me or if I have a chance to meet when he walks out, what is the positive change in his thinking that he should walk away with? And the fourth question is, constantly asking this, what is my real value? And each day it can change. Because your value of yesterday is outdated. But when you ask today, what's my real value? You're bound to learn something, acquire something, inspire something. These are four quadrant questions that can give you or get you closer to figuring out your why. And I'm going to give you some of the more questions. Uh, I spoke about what is it makes me come alive. What is it I really enjoy doing most? Now here, there's a little caveat. I may enjoy playing flute, but what I enjoy more is when I do something which gives me a sense of service. And that gives me the greatest joy. 
they learn to differentiate between your hobby and passion. If earning money is not a constraint, where will I spend my countless hours? In lab, in reading books, in talking to people. What is it I like to read, wonder, and as to how it can be done differently? My number of books that I buy and the number of books I read, the ratio is five is to one. Five books I buy, probably I one I read, and that to 20%. But that does not stop me from buying books. Bye. And you know, later on, I found that this number of five is to one matches with Satya Nadella. I said, oh, then it's not a bad thing to do. <laughs> at least I could build a business case at home, you know, I should be allowed to buy more books. Guys, two things can change the course of your life. The books that you read and the people that you meet. In my life, five people came who changed the course of my life irreversibly. So think about which is that area about which you like to read, write, dwell, and really enjoy. What is it I love to write about to bring you positive change? What is it I like to teach about making a difference? So if money is not a constraint, I think all of us are teacher. And we have a responsibility to teach, transfer, and transform. When I meet people, what is it I want to learn from them? For me, people are a bundle of at least 100 books. What you'll gain from one book, if you spend an hour with uh, them, you spend an hour with them, you're going to learn wisdom or gain wisdom worth 100 books. So, certain things <laughs> help you is identify the things that you can do to make other people's life better. Now, this part is very structured and methodology which I'm giving you today, that in order to figure out your why, these are some of the steps that you can follow. First one being, identify the things that you can do to make others' life better. Number two, yeah, guys, if you can just put yourself on mute. Recall activities that made you forget about the passage of time. Because you're so passionately engrossed in that. Look for the cues from things that you enjoyed being or doing as a kid. I must tell you, when I was in class two, I had this crazy thing of filling my bag with books. At times, my brother would check it, throw out all these books, you are just adding weight to your shoulder. Think of things that you felt like doing without hesitation or judgment. Half the time we kill our own creativity by self-imposed judgment. Notice what people ask of you when they come to you for help. Cues of possibilities are hidden in that. If time is running out, what would you like to accomplish or finish? What is it for which you would be willing to go the extra mile? If given a chance, what would you like to teach others? What would you do for free if money is not in need anymore? One of my aspirations is to go and teach primary school kids. But that's going to be the hardest thing in life. When I have grown in life, I become older. I think teaching primary kids would be the most difficult thing. And what's the usual reason why people thank you for gratitude? So guys, these are 10 more prompts that I have given you. And if you assimilate all that, adding to your weekend exercises, these are some of the sample statements of why. Evanshu, yeah. uh, can, can I request you to elaborate on uh, item five of your uh, list in the previous chart? Yeah. Notice what people ask of you when they come to you for help. For example, 
in my case, people often came to share their dilemmas, their contradictions, their paradoxes that they are grappling with. <coughs> and they would bounce off with me. I said, what should we do? So I realized that maybe I think people see me as a good soundboard and a thinking partner. And can I do something in future in a more professional and more organized way? So okay, when people often ask, I used to make notes that why did they come to me? What did they ask? What kind of questions they brought? Because somewhere they trusted me, I could do it better. Sometimes you yourself may not know what you're really good at. And that's where this question can be of great help. Does okay. this make sense? Yeah. Never thought in that angle. All right. So these are some of the sample statements which I'm giving you, like to figure out why to leave the word better than I found and be remembered by the people whose lives I touched or to have fun in my journey through life and learn from my mistakes or to help people be more connected in their life, career and business so that they can live their life in a measurable way. Now, these are just some of the examples. What I'm giving you is a kind of template so when you're trying to write your why statement, you say, oh, why to do that so that, so why is your contribution? And so that you can create an impact. So look to carve your why statement is in two ways. What could be your contribution and what could be your impact? Like for me, the contribution is the company, my company name is Centro Strategic Mindset. So my contribution is to make people strategic so that they can create a bold impact. So look at your statement in these two ways and you gonna have a couple of narratives before it gets sharpened to the quality that will change the way. So guys, I'm gonna take a pause here and through this conversation, I wanted to leave you with this thought. The entire session is designed to improve your articulation. It's the power of words. If you come up with a set of questions, you're going to have a lot of words and phrases and your words will create your world. And when you have these words, these two things are your best friends, habits and routine. I often say rituals plus routine equals to rhythm. Rituals plus routine equals to rhythm. And when you have the rhythm, you, you are on a fast lane. So with that, Nikita, I'm going to take a pause and take some questions if anyone has. Over to you. Thank you, everyone, for Thank patiently you. listening and contributing. Thanks, Manshu, for such a wonderful, inspiring, insightful session. Every time I hear you, I'm truly, truly inspired. And you said today is Thursday. So Guru Vaad and, you know, you're like a guru sharing all the knowledge. Uh, before we get on to the q and I want you to all just take a two minute pause. I've shared a link. If you just scroll up, I'll share the link again. Um, and just share your feedback or what has been your learning. The idea is to take these learnings forward. Uh, I've posted this on LinkedIn. If you can just comment uh, your experience, your learnings on uh, for today's session, take about one or two minutes um, and, uh, you know, share your experience there. So, Himanshu, if that's okay, if uh, people can just take one or two minutes to, I thought it's, we bet, do it on social rather than, you know, creating a feedback form. So if that's okay, we'll pause. We'll start Q&A probably after two or three minutes. Let people share their experience. Absolutely. Uh, let me share the link again. Just give me a minute because I know some people and I will request people not to type on the chat window because then people would, uh, you know, miss the link. Just give me a minute. I'm going to share the link again. And don't chat, uh, don't put anything on the uh, chat window for the next two minutes so that people have their links. So we'll give it two minutes for people to share your learnings, experience, whatever, you know, whatever you gained from it.
and do write on the comment box as don't like it we would love to hear from you so do write it and i'll request everyone to go on mute just request everyone to hold on to the questions and not type on the chat window so that everyone has the link we'll take the question in another 2 minutes and in the meantime if you all can just share your experience i'm sure himanshu and all of us at nhrd would love to hear it will also help us plan future sessions you know if this was useful we can obviously plan another session Nay, Manshu has made us do some deep reflection. Uh, even while you share it, think about what was that one thing that you took away from this session. I'll give it one more minute before we start the Q and A. <laughs> While while we are doing this, Himanshu, what are you reading now? I'm reading call a book called The Art of Engagement. I don't know the author. Um, and the art of engagement is about how do you create bridge the gap between people and possibilities and possible yeah when we, when i'm looking at people and i also have some challenges in my mind so if i can bridge the gap between people and possibilities something is going to come out one so can i can i make one request to you sure. i'm sure 78 people or 90 people on this call if you can also suggest one or two books that has made an impact on you not i wouldn't say good books that has made an impact on you in the context of what you were sharing today we would actually benefit a lot okay there are lots of books what uh, what comes to my yeah. mind the problem is you know choosing a book sometimes you know like you said this whole buy five books read half of one But it does. I'm. Mean, there's a word I was just reading only day before yesterday. The Japanese word called uh, starts with T S O U. So Tosuma Zaki. Hmm. For people who buy books but don't read them, <laughs> I think I belong to that type. One day I'll read it. But the problem that I was trying to address by asking you this question is. if somebody recommends a book becomes much more easier why of the book rather than what of the book yeah i think today you book, talk a lot about why yeah this book original by adam grant is a book good book adam grant yeah there is another book called creative confidence by tom kelly and david kelly is a very good book in fact two days ago i was in touch with adam grant and he's now taken out this book for mm -hmm. instrument of how what type of personality profile are you um right well yeah one of the books i love most is uh, is this here called ego is the enemy so that that's a book by ryan holiday is a very nice book because each day you some do something and something happens to you the snake of ego goes up and you you need to learn the way to curl up and bring it back it's a daily fight yes nikita sure i think while people are typing in i do see some comments flowing in but yeah let's start with the q and a 
you know people would have a lot of questions in the meantime you know the others can continue posting their comments uh, there is a question from dr krishnamurthy please elaborate rituals plus routines is equal to rhythm yeah see every day i wake up between 4:30 and 4:45 and the moment i wake up and open my eyes i just turn up and do a simple back exercise which is stretching followed by vajrasana before i leave the bed then i go to kitchen and prepare two glasses of warm water one for me one for my wife so that is a ritual and then i have a book and a pen ready that which i have to read and write the 10 minutes of reading so often people say oh i could not finish the book or i don't get time and my philosophy guys just read 10 minutes or two pages a day that's sufficient because those two pages and 10 minutes will give you a metaphor or a phrase or an idea or a question so all these things will be part of what i call rituals now these rituals happen at a particular time and that's where they become part of the routine does this make sense dr krishna yeah. okay so ritual is an act but when you do it consistently at a given schedule it becomes a routine okay next question if there's anyone 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 has any uh, just want to continue that uh, rituals plus routines is equal to rhythm you said so can you just say something on the rhythm part please yeah so if you do it days after days months after month you get a rhythm in life your body get used to it your metabolism establishes a fine rhythm your breathing takes the rhythm so rhythm is the music that comes out from a combination of rituals and routine for your body to function efficiently it has to be a melody so ritual is an act doing it at a particular time is a routine and when you do it consistently days after day so that subconscious in your muscle memory it is so deeply ingrained it becomes a rhythm thank you thank you dr krishna murthy good question you asked good question okay nikita this seen just give me a minute i think there's some question if you would like to ask your question live i think it's a great opportunity while i'll continue reading it from the chat window but we'll prioritize if anyone wants to unmute and ask their question yeah let's make it live yeah Uh, Imanshu, uh, uh, there's there's something that I'd like to definitely say. The book you're currently reading on the art of engagement, I can tell you, is a fascinating book for improving employee engagement. Nikita, could you gather because there was a faint voice? Yeah, even I couldn't hear it clearly. Can you repeat something on the uh, book you're reading? Yeah, I, I said uh, the book that uh, Mr. Imanshu is reading right now. Okay, is a fascinating book on employee engagement. improving employee engagement it's worth every page weight in gold and who's the author uh, it, uh, i think it's it's uh, jim hordan if i remember right okay excellent book yes yeah, somebody asked a question about um, explaining generative thinking and how your experience about reading the hard copy book helps create the difference okay Yeah, the question has two parts, Pooja. First is generative thinking. When you read something, when you entertain a question or an idea, that idea triggers something in your mind, and then you start thinking of something else. That is called generative thinking. So, if a thought, question, idea, story triggers your thinking in a particular way. you are building on the initial stimulus that you got and this discipline of generative thinking creates original thoughts so that's my response to the first part of your question 
Second is why hard copy? Answer is very simple because I love to write and a firmness of the hard book gives me this required resilience. Well, my books are dirty. And let me tell you one thing, guys. The books that you are reading, if those books are dirty, your mind would be clean. A lot of people have this notion that you don't have to do a book. So combine the element of generative thinking with the habit of writing in the books, you're going to get clutter-free. Yeah, that's my response to question by Pooja. Sir, can I ask a question actually? Yes. So it, again, related to, so I'm person, so it is again related to reading books. So when you read a book, right, maybe whatever time or routine or rituals, whatever you follow, but once you finish, after some period of time, you actually, whatever you have learned over a period of, in that particular book, you may, uh, it is usually you get, a, or you, for, you start forgetting the things, whatever you have learned in that. Right. I have seen myself, actually, I read around uh, in, in 15, 20 days, I read a book and then I finish after 15, 20 days, I again read another books. And when I realize or reflect myself, I see that whatever I read first time in a, maybe uh, a month back, I start forgetting or whatever principle I would have learned, start, forget, start uh, forgetting that. How do you, means, how do you tackle these things? Okay. To the answer to your question and many questions pertaining to reading, guys, I've just posted an article in the chat. It's called Let Reading Redefine Your Life. It's a LinkedIn post. I made it many years ago. And that has many answers to the questions pertaining to reading. So I'll request you to have a look and you will definitely find an answer. If you still don't find Text me on LinkedIn, I will respond. But I'm 100% sure the answer is covered in that. So, sure, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I just want to ask you one more thing, sir. Uh, you know, today I found that I'm not alone. I mean, uh, I buy, my ratio is four is to one. I buy four books and then read only one, actually. Very so good. I was feeling guilty good also. Ratio. Naji? It's a very good ratio. <laughs> I was feeling guilty all this while that I spent so much money on books, you know, but then I don't read it. Okay. But uh, Akhil is, Akhil Sahib is there with me and uh, you are there. So I think it's okay. <laughs> You're learning wrong things. <laughs> yeah. Listen, we must understand the purpose of book. And that's what I covered in this article. If a book can give you one idea. Best Sufficient. Book. Sufficient. Very well, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Very well. Important is what do you do with that idea? Do you take that idea and run with that idea to do something about? That's the real purpose of the value. Okay. Uh, Love that. Love that answer. And uh, he wants some idea. Sometime you may cover the back of the page of the book. You may get an epilogue. You may get in the title of the book or a quote. It's okay. Yes. No, no, I, was saying, I, I was just asking, I mean, requesting actually whether we'll have a copy of these slides. Is it possible? Yeah, we yeah, can. So we will, uh, we'll anyways uh, share the recording. We'll upload it on our YouTube channels. Yeah. And you so the recording will be there? Yes, YouTube. we'll upload the recording. And it's okay to share with people? Like, I'm sure if I send to my daughter and all, it's okay, right? No okay. copyright, no copyright, copyright thing, right? Sir? Okay, knowledge is for giving. Where will I carry it? Thank you, sir. Thank you. One, one thing which I learned, which I'm going to share with everyone. If knowledge leaves your hand, wisdom comes in. So don't wow. lose the knowledge. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Excellent. You're becoming wiser, my friend. Thank you. Really? No, the, the mellowness is showing now. Yes, Nikita, is there any other question? Uh, Himanshu Shemant uh, said, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, so I have a couple of questions, uh, Himanshu. It's more from the corporate world. Uh, this is our role, what we handle and the task what are assigned to us. It is more a top-down approach. And majority of the times it happens that we are only uh, seen as the executors. 
so even when we sometimes question uh, why we should do this activity and is there any better way of doing this activity or if at all can we do away without doing that activity the answer comes uh, you know just say what we do and there are people who decide on those tasks so the mm. question is uh, when we uh, keep on getting the similar kind of an answer uh, saying that uh, don't ask uh, the, you know the why part of it and do it one second uh, when we are not happy why we are doing it so maybe i'll take an example of uh, uh, you know some uh, retrenchment what we do some of the closures what we do the tough conversations which we need to have with employees uh, so especially you know in those kind of cases where we need to close down a particular uh, division or a unit and uh, you know ask the people to move on so those kind of conversations the why though we are clear uh, but we are not happy or we are not convinced with the reason so how should we proceed uh, you know in those see your uh, statement has two or three questions if i forget please excuse me you can ask again because i have a good heart but weak memory so the first part is you are repeatedly told do as told Are you not supposed to ask the question? I think the way to handle this is first, you must learn how to ask the question so that the guy who is above you is not feeling that you are threatening his authority or you are questioning his authority because people want to be very possessive about their authority. Second, there are two ways to ask the question. One is to say, okay. what will happen if we do this and the guy is taken aback the second is to ask the question in the manner i am wondering have we considered all possible options or can there be a setback on to that and leave the question on the table because the question must create that chemical locha after some time so that's the second part timing is very important if you ask the question at the wrong time when the person is not in the space he is going to tell us shut up but there will be an alternate place an alternate window or the guy could be in a different <coughs> space that's where you can at the table pe dheere se question ko sarkana hai and leave the question to work on its own what is the last portion of your question third one Uh, when we are not convinced or happy uh, with the, the why part of the question uh, but we need to execute as a part of the role yeah there will be many situations in life where you may not be happy what you have been asked to do but that being asked to do could be a part of a bigger picture and sometimes you may not have the clarity about the big picture and people not be may not be comfortable telling you about that big picture i'm going to invite you to watch a movie called margin call it's a movie on financial crisis how it happens when the analyst discovers the uh, collateralized debt received all the chaos that happened mortgage default and you will get answer some of the answer to your question in that movie it's called margin call we have time for one last question uh, so if anyone wants to ask live and uh, you know if you have further questions feel free to reach out to manchu uh, and you know ask your questions and but nikita it would help all of us uh, if you can get from himanshu after this call the name of the author of the book because i just opened up there are about 11 or 12 books call employee engagement and nothing with no, no, no. i didn't mean the book employee engagement it's called the art of engagement for oh, the art of engagement yes okay thanks on uh, nikita can you kindly give us the email id and uh, some contacts of mr himanshu so that we could write to him if we have any question uh, himanshu want to reach out on linkedin i always respond yeah. Achha. In fact, the LinkedIn post I've tagged him Anshu as well. You can just click on his name. Uh, that's the fastest. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Him Anshu, sir, uh, about that link book reading, uh, I'm not able to see it in chat. If you can uh, repaste it. Yeah, I posted twice, but I'm going to do one more time. 
Yeah. Manchu, I think you'll have to post it to everyone. Okay, I'm possibly posting to mm-hmm. one person. Yeah, sorry. Okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, there you go. Now you should be happy. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have time for one last question and uh, uh, so Himanshu, to ask. Yeah, so I would like to ask Himanshu. Uh, so it's a very nice uh, and uh, insightful session. Uh, the uh, point is that after knowing what you have taught us today to ask questions and what is the purpose of life. So it's always good to sit back and think about this, which we will all think. But how do we convert this thought into a reality? Because many a times what happens is uh, during the session and after the session for moments, the learning remains alive. But then in the daily rigmarole, it gets lost. And then whatever is learned is not really converted okay into practice so any uh, tips on how we can take this ahead and actually yeah I, i'm going to give you tips but uh, would you follow the tips yes okay i'm going to give you two tips number one firstly you said on these questions on purpose, you have to find some peaceful time, sit back and relax. The answer is no. You have to keep entertaining this question. So te, jak te, me, khate, pite. All the time you have to entertain the question. You have to yeah. fall in love with the question. Then only it will do magic. That's my first tip. The second tip is when a thought has been created, what I'm going to say now, everyone can write down. But this is really powerful. So think it, ink it, and link it to its daily action. So don't just think it, but ink it means liko, and link it to daily action. If you can follow these two tips, a lot of things can change for you. We don't do that. We just think like a mm-hmm. you have to think it. You have to look at what you've written every day. Then it does magic. Then strange things happen, dots connect, possibilities emerge. So don't just think it, think it and link it to daily action. Over to Nikita, but before I do that, I just wanted to share with you he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. So that's all from me. It's great interacting with you, and I hope this session has been of significance and use to everyone. Thank you, everyone. Great one. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manshu. Uh, wonderful session. Um, and I think the, the Q&A can just go on on and on, but we have to just put an end uh, to the session. Uh, we'll definitely plan for a follow-up conversation or a session with you. But thanks a lot for doing this monthly meet session uh, with all of us. Um, to everyone else, just a reminder, we have the 20% discount on the memberships. Uh, till March 31st, which is Wednesday. So if you want to avail that, to do avail that. The links and everything is on our LinkedIn and other social channels. And we also have a storytelling uh, learning program starting on May 1st. So if you're interesting, interested, do sign up for that. Will that, I... One second. Thank you, Nikita, for organizing. Guys, Nikita has been after me for so many months. And a lot of credit goes to Nikita for getting this session to you. But Emanshu, thank you for agreeing and sharing your wisdom, I would say. Really good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Uh, no, Emanshu, while you're just leaving, I'm just asking you uh, out of the way a question. You know, uh, it appears that your Hindi, you know, which you keep uh, uh, going into very often, it's very natural. Are you from Madhya Pradesh? So, 
So, being in the military, I've been to all parts of the world, but I have a fear for language, so Hindi, English, Urdu, whatever. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, I, I belong to Madhya Pradesh and I really resonate with this, you know, whatever you were saying. Yeah. Really very pleasing to the ears. Maybe I would have heard Harivan Shrai Bachchan quite a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Thank you, thanks everyone. Thank you, Manshi. It was a wonderful session. I'm Dr. R.S. Davas from Delhi, the past president of Delhi chapter. Wonderful mm -hmm. session. Thank you. Truly enjoying, very introspecting, and very purposeful. Thanks, really. Bangalore chapter. Really happy to hear that. Thank you. And thanks, thank Akhil you. for uh, really a lot of introspection. Thank you. Bye-bye. The gem of a session. Gem of a session. Great. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Avinash, if you can stop the recording and end the session.